today. Now, of course, it's the sixth movie in the popular series, and our entertainment editor, Nula Hafner, is one of the biggest Potter fans we know. She caught up with the man <laughs> himself, Daniel Radcliffe, and Nula joins us now from London. Morning to you, Nula. Now, first of all, we heard that Rupert Grin, who plays Ron, of course, in the films, was recovering from swine flu. What's the update on his condition? Morning, Koshi and Melia. What unfortunate timing, being struck with a, a mild case, we're told, of swine flu, so close to the world premiere. Look, the cast had their first wave of interviews today. So far, so good. Rupert seems fine, and no journalists are reporting any uh, flu-like symptoms either. So, so far, so good. Doctors have definitely said that uh, he isn't contagious anymore. Well, don't shake his hand on the red carpet anyway, just to be sure. <laughs> now, you've interviewed um, Daniel Radcliffe a couple of times, haven't you? Ha Do you reckon, has he changed since your first chat with him, apart from growing up? Not at all. Yeah, this is what I love about these young stars is that, you know, they started when they were 10, 11, 12. They're now in their late teens, early 20s. World famous, multi, multi, multi millionaires. And they're still so down to earth and charming. And you look at, you know, what's happened to some child stars, particularly in the US, and it's, you know, it's a bit of a poison chalice. But they have managed to uh, avoid any of those pitfalls. And I asked Daniel what it was like for him growing up in the spotlight. This place has known magic. Very dark. Very powerful. This time, I cannot hope to destroy it alone. Here we are again. Yes. Do you feel like it's a kind of seven up documentary? You know, we check in <laughs> every couple of years. Oh, look how he's grown. Yeah, no, it is, I suppose it's strange. And the amount of people that sort of do come in and say, my God, you've grown so much. Well, I should hope so. You know, if I was the same size I was when you first met me at 11, that would be worrying. Well, I'm not, the fact is I'm not much taller. But, um, <laughs> but no, no, it is, it's good. I mean, it's, it's kind of, and you get to see a lot of the same familiar kind of faces and some of the, the mad ones as well. Don't know you're, who you're, you're talking not, about. You're, don't know you're, you're not in the about. lunatic Yeah, I'm the nice column. one. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, we have a few mad ones which are always highly entertaining. We can bring people together. Take my hand. And they can tear them apart. These girls, they're gonna kill me, Harry. Hey, she's only interested in you because she thinks you're the chosen one. But I am the chosen one. Now, the movie, Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. Now, what's happening with Harry this time? So Voldemort's tightening his grip, Hogwarts might not even be safe, and hormones are racing. Tell me more. Thank God you reminded me of all that. What's quite nice this time is I'm not the only one who has to do the love scenes because Ron has a massive kissing scene with, with Lavender Brown, played by the brilliant Jessie Cave, who's really, really cool and just going to... I think she's going to be great in the film and I think she'll be one of the fan favourites, I, I hope. And uh, and I was totally unprofessional on that day and just basically trying to make Rupert laugh. Because... Because I could! These are mad times we live in! In my life, I've seen things that are truly horrific. Now I know you will see worse. It's weird, this film, because it's when it's dark, it's, it's even darker than any of the films previous, but when it's light and comedic, it's much funnier and lighter than any of the films have been in the past. So it's sort of, there is, I, I like to think we've found a nice balance, but I'm probably gonna be, other people will judge that. You're the chosen one, Harry. You have to realize who you are. Without you, we leave the fate of our world to chance. You have no choice. Harry, no! You must not fail. Now, uh, David Yates is back to direct yes. this one. Also, you know, Emma, you mentioned Rupert. Is it nice having the old team back together? It's great, you know. I mean, it's always... I mean, it's... it's it, you know, it's lovely working with Emma and Rupert, as always, and, and all the cast. And it's been fantastic working with Michael Gambon this time. As well as being one of the greatest actors I've ever worked with, he's also probably the, the, the single least professional. <laughs> he's ridiculous. <laughs> he's fantastic. I mean, have you ever interviewed him? Because <laughs> no. I mean, if you ever do, he'll just lie to you. <laughs> He just lies constantly, and it's wonderful. I mean, he, t he tells people he was in the Royal Ballet Company, and then he fell off the stage during the performance of The Nutcracker, and he fell through a timpani <laughs> drum, and he hasn't danced since. And he just, and on set, you know, he'll be joking with you right up until turnover and action. 
and he's just he's kind of out of control but he's he's just brilliant Artists, i have to do this fight back you can't 